On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, Red West, one of Elvis's closest friends and Memphis Mafia members, joins George Klein, GK, at the first ever GK Memphis Mafia reunion on Bill Street in 1993. Red West shares a few of his stories with Elvis, talks about all those movies that he appeared in, and uh, hey, I, I think you might enjoy it. So let's get to the video. Picture. Uh, what was that movie he made, Richard? I know, I know the name of it. The name of it, he, he just met, uh, did a great part in a motion picture with uh, Patrick Swayze called Roadhouse. Uh, he's a guy, I tell you what, I'm going to beat him up because he's late, and I can take care of him with one hand. <laughs> that is a guy, I can say that because if he hits me, he'll probably kill me. But he's a guy, ladies and gentlemen, this is Red West, who we're talking about, Red West. Bobby Jean. Bobby Jean. He had more nicknames in a group than anybody. Bobby Jean, Bullet, Red. He had a lot of nicknames. Was Bullet on the back of your bracelet? Yeah. He was. Bullet was a, ladies and gentlemen, he was at Hume's High with us. He was the guy where you saw in the Dick Clark motion picture where the guys were going to cut Elvis's hair. Red was there. He stopped that. There were other cases at Hume's High where guys were waiting to beat me or Elvis up, and Red would always step in and take up for us. There was a situation once we were playing baseball in a, for a junior Rotary League team and somebody in the stands was writing me about my religion and the way I looked. Uh, I had a big broken nose and Red was on the same team and he just kind of eased over and took that baseball bat and hit the guy <laughs> with the baseball bat. But anyway, he didn't need a baseball bat, but he didn't need no bat. He needed any help. But uh, he's a great guy. He is now back in Memphis communicating back and forth to Hollywood. About a month ago, he brought, he brought Joe Don Baker down to visit with us. He had Bo Hopkins in town. He has an actor's studio that is doing real well. I've sent a couple students out there to you, by the way. I certainly have. He has a lovely wife, Pat, and if it hadn't been for me and Alan Fortis, he may never have met his wife because uh, we took her out to Graceland to visit one time. Elvis hired her as a secretary. Red courted her, and they later uh, became man and wife, and they're a lovely couple. They have two marvelous children. And he's a great guy and a dear friend of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Red West. Thank you, George. I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, it's been a busy day. I All right. had some prior commitments, and uh, I got up here as fast as I could. My buddy, Bobby Dawson, who we went to school with. Bobby Dawson, yes. Where is Dawson and Betty? We lied him. We used to lie him. He used to fight Another, another school. Hey, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> yeah, we lied up when you went, you used fight But, uh, yeah, we had a prior commitment with them, and before that I had another commitment. And there's not enough hours in the day, but I'm glad to see all these Elvis fans here. And keep it up. Yeah. All right. And uh, we've all got a lot of years, a lot of, a lot of uh, great stories, you know, to share with everybody. It was a good life. I'm sorry that it ended the way it did. But uh, that's the way life is, you know, sometimes. But uh, he was the greatest, always will be the greatest, and uh, he's the best friend I ever had. So I'm glad to be here, and we'll be here the rest of the night. Red, a lot of people want to know, what, what are you doing these days? I just really touched on it briefly. If you bring him up to date, what Red West is well, doing? Well, I just, I just finished, uh, well, there's a movie coming out called Gun in Bed, Loose Handbag, that we did in Oxford. That's been... A lot of promos around town, and I just got back from Hollywood. I did a thing, uh, Joseph Wamba, who wrote <laughs> Onion Field <laughs> and uh, Choir Boy, you know, the ex police dude that became a writer. I just finished the movie with him of, of his called uh, the, It's going to be a series, Joseph Wamba Chronicles. Hello, hello. <laughs> Who's playing with the red? This I got a question for Bullet Bob, Bob and Jay, and Red West. Red, uh, I was just thinking before I came down tonight, you probably got had more fights with Elvis than anybody in the group because Red would do the fight scenes with Elvis in the motion pictures. He screwed up his knee in uh, Flaming Star. And uh, it, when I remember the funny thing, I was I was really I was taking a shot today and I started laughing. And I thought I was, I was laughing about Sonny. Sonny was showing us with, there's a guy named Mushy Callahan used to uh, what they call gap, it means, uh, how do you explain it? Right? Stunt corner. Stunt corner. He's the ex champion of the world. Uh, he was a boxer. Flyweight, yeah. And he would, and so Sonny thought he was going to get to do some of the fight scenes. 
Sonny was at the Sam Goldwyn Studios, and he was demonstrating to us what he's going to do. And his knee went out. They took him to the hospital, and Red did all the fight scenes with Elvis. We've done the fight scenes previously. But, Red, can you tell us about, and, and I, I know I'm biased and I'm prejudiced, and it's hard to be objective, but I see fight scenes in motion pictures today, and they don't look half as realistic as the fight scenes that you did with Elvis. Well, because I was, was as close to real as you could get, I guess. I mean, uh, uh, we worked out in, in karate a lot, and uh, I'm proud to say that Elvis and I were probably the first two people to do a karate fight on television, and that's where it all evolved from. Is that Flaming Elvis, Star? Flaming Star. Right. We did karate in Flaming Star, Indians, you know. But, and that's how uh, uh, Ed Parker had the karate studio going, but that's when karate took off in, in the United States and everywhere. Once Elvis started, it became known that he was doing it. But, let's see, he made th 33 movies, right? 31. Yeah, 33. And I was in, I have the distinction of, other than Elvis being in more of his movies than anybody else, I was in 30, or 28, 28 or 29, I don't know. And we did a fight scene in almost every one of them. And I've got the scars proved. But the funniest thing we ever did uh, on Flaming Star, of course we had horses, and I just broke my elbow doing a fight scene with him. Had a cast, and I'm riding by on this horse, and that was ne had never thrown a lasso in his life. And he just happened to have a rope. And I'm coming back with this big quarter horse. And he threw this rope out and went right around my neck. And the horse and I, I mean, I pulled the horse back, I wasn't about to come off the horse with this, this broken elbow. But my tongue had to shoot out a foot, and the horse's tongue shot out a foot. And we stopped, and Elvis was frozen. He, he couldn't believe he last over me, and he just stayed there looking at it with this rope. And that was one of the stunts that I didn't get paid for. You didn't get a, well, a chest, but is that right, Richard? You didn't get a chest. Yeah, just on that <laughs> yeah, me and the horse were looking eye to eye. Man. Red, well, the question is uh, from the audience, did you ever actually hit Elvis in a fight scene? Never. He hit me. He hit you? <laughs> yeah, I never hit no. I never, no. That's what, but, but, I'm proud yeah. to say I've never hit anybody except Conrad. I, I grazed Conrad in Wild Wild West once, but that was, I just got his attention. But okay. Never hit Elvis. Okay, now, Red is going to how good he was at karate. Red, Red at one time had a karate school. And uh, he's pretty proficient at the sport himself. Red, comment on Elvis's ability in karate. Let's settle that for once and for all. Elvis was very capable in karate. Very capable. He, we, uh, when he wasn't on stage singing in Las Vegas, we were upstairs. We even had a class upstairs with Richard and everybody can uh, attest to. We had classes up there. Everybody had their keys on, and we lined up and went through our collars, went through the things, and he. Uh, would do demonstrations every night, whoever was up there, Ann Margaret, Tom Jones, uh, anybody. We went into karate and then he went into singing. That was his two favorite things, singing and karate. And we must have logged at least uh, four hours a day in karate. When people, That's not your question? What is your question then? Uh, that, that's... That's uh, really not a good question. Why, why couldn't <laughs> Dr. Nikopoulos was a very dear friend of Elvis. You, you don't know the whole story. The, uh, the question is why could we not do something about Dr. Nikopoulos? Is that what you're saying? Dr. Nikopoulos was a very close friend of Elvis. Any of these guys will tell you that Jerry Schilling said it best. When Dr. Nikopoulos was there, Elvis was in good health. When he wasn't, Elvis's health was questionable. Is that right, Red? Was, That's right. There was a lot of doctors other than Dr. Nic Nicopolis. I'm sorry That's okay. Well, let's go on to something else. Shh! And he was singing the national anthem and forgot the words. And that was, as always, had this little gun there. Oh, you stupid son. <laughs> Come to pick me up. That's why that was. It wasn't anything personal against Robert Gillet. Yes, sir, you over here. The letter about Wayne Newton. Uh, the letter by Wayne Newton, where Elvis supposedly Billy wrote a le uh, some notes and threw it in a waste can, read somebody found it. Uh, later on, they uh, put it up for auction, and then Wayne Newton got a hold of it and had a guy work with him on the lyrics. And he wants to know uh, the validity of the letter. Well, I can't say, but let's just say this: it sounds very far fetched. Okay. 
All right, that's a good answer. Okay, question. Yes, over here. Listen, I think he and Charlie, the three of them, uh, composed a song together. You'll be gone. You'll be gone is a song. The other songs that you see Elvis's name on, like Don't Be Cool, All Shook Up, that was a business arrangement. But what happened was one night, Red and Charlie and Elvis were flipping around the piano. Elvis had a title and a few choice lines, and he and Red and Charlie could that. This guy right here is the only guy who actually ever wrote a song with Elvis and Charlie. All right. Red. But let me say this. Let me say this in Red's behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, this tough guy who came out of North Memphis, he came out of the white ghetto with me and Elvis and all those over at Humans High School. It wasn't easy, but he fought his way out of it. He's done great, but he also is a very talented man in his own right. He wrote, whether Elvis recorded or not, one of my all-time favorite Christmas songs, If Every Day Could Be Like Christmas. And and he took it upstairs to, to Graceland. And Elvis was uh, in one of his uh, situations where he didn't want to see anybody for a couple days. He wanted some peace and quiet. Red put the demonstration record under the door. Elvis said, I'll get to it next year. Red went and recorded it. Then, if you ever listen to the song, If Every Day Could Be Like Christmas, get a real good stereo, turn it up real loud, and you'll hear Elvis singing over Red, who was doing the demo. <laughs> Red did that a yeah. lot. Red did the demo on that for Elvis. Also, he wrote Separate Ways. And he wrote, uh, if you talk in your sleep, don't mention my name, and many other Elvis songs, we could go on and on. But I love Separate Ways, and I love If Every, if Every Day Was Like Christmas. Great, great song. He also wrote some other songs for other stars, Dino Dazzy and Billy, Time Will Tell. I got a pretty good memory, don't I? Yeah, yeah. Pat, Pat Boone. Pat Boone, he wrote for Pat Boone. My babe. John Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> I got a copy of that. My babe, Red. In my car. I I'm glad somebody does. I've got an instrumental I copy of the Red West Combo doing my babe. I, I, I was going to give it to you. I got it in my car. I got one. I get it. Yes. Uh, yeah. I want it. How you doing? What's happening? Everything okay? Good to see you, my man. Okay, next. Thanks for watching to the end. If you haven't already, go check out all my other videos that I've uploaded on this channel. Hey, don't double dribble. Subscribe to Glow Trotting with Trey. It's free. doesn't cost you a thing. And you stay updated with every new video that I upload, which is once every week and special videos here and there. Till next time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.